Hi, it's Charlie Minotto from HalfWheel.com, and over the years I've reviewed a lot of different humidors in all shapes and sizes, but when it comes to traditional desktop humidors, like the ones you see in front of me, most of the desktop humidors I have reviewed have been in the four to $600 price point, which is basically the upper middle class of desktop humidors. And so for my next review, or as it turns out, my next seven reviews, I wanted to see if there was a cheaper or cheap humidor that actually works that I would recommend. And I specifically started looking to see if I could find a $100 humidor that advertises holding 100 cigars that was a traditional wooden humidor, so no plastic, that would work. And I quickly realized that probably wasn't going to happen. So I ended up changing those qualifications a little bit and bought seven humidors that all meet basically three requirements. The first is they got to look like a traditional desktop humidor. So there's no uh, plastic, there's no acrylic humidors, there's no converted coolers. They got to be things that you would think of when you think of a humidor. The second is that they need to hold at least 50 Robustos and not the advertised number. They needed to be capable of legitimately holding it without any humidor Tetris. 50 cigars, normal size cigars quite easily, of which I think all of these do. And the third was that there was a hard price limit of $175 before tax or shipping. Now I will point out some of these humidors were bought on sale, but I also think some of these humidors are on sale year round. So whatever the case is, you should be able to, with a little bit of research, find any of the seven humidors that are being reviewed as part of the series for less than $175. So this is the Craftsman's Bench Havana humidor. Uh, we paid $79.95 for this humidor. Craftsman's Bench is part of J.C. Newman. They also sell higher end humidors under the Diamond Crown name. And this is a unique looking humidor. There are actually three different versions of this humidor that are all the same except they have different finishes. So this one has a tobacco leaf finish. Um, and I'm guessing that this is printed on here, but it's on all of the, the panels you can see here. Um, and what it is is a dried tobacco leaf before the tobacco, what it looks like before it gets rolled into a cigar. Um, this actually kind of looks like it's from a barn. There's a little, you can see a little bit of green here. Um, but whatever the case is, it's a very unique looking humidor. I'm guessing if you didn't know any better, you'd probably suspect this was like a weird camouflage type of thing. Um, but this is in fact a tobacco leaf. And if you don't like it, they make two other versions that perhaps you will like a little bit more. Um, it is 13.4 inches in width on the exterior, 8.4 inches from here to here. And it is five inches tall. It is advertised as eight is 13 and a half by eight and a half. But as far as my tape measure could tell, it's a little bit shorter than that. Um, inside, it is 12 inches from here to here. It is uh, seven inches from here to here, and it is 4.1 inch, or four and one eighth inches, sorry, from the floor to the top of this piece right here. Um, maybe you could store a few more cigars in here. I can't tell if it's actually hitting the top of the lid, um, but uh, the humidor discount calculator says that you can store 77 or 76, I'm sorry, Robustos in this humidor. On the lid, you can see the two included accessories. They are both magnetic, but the lid is not magnetic, which means you need to stick these two things here. Uh, there is an included analog hygrometer. Um, and interestingly enough, that thing keeps falling down and has actually stuck to the floor of the humidor a couple times. And there is also a quality importer's branded floors from humidifier. I bring that up because Quality Importers is one of the largest uh, makers or importers of humidors. Uh, they also are the parent company behind Zycar, Palio, Stinky Ashtray, Cigar Caddy, a whole bunch of other brands. Um, but they make a lot of humidors from small travel humidors all the way up to big multi-door cabinet style humidors that I could literally fit inside of. Um, I don't know if this humidor was made through them or contracted by them or, or any of those things, or if JC Newman just bought the humidifier. Um, but but it is sort of an interesting thing. J.C. Newman for their higher end stuff has its own sort of proprietary diamond crown braided um, humidifier, which you also could buy as, a, as an option for this humidor. Um, but uh, other than that, there's not much. It's a pretty no frills humidor. There is an included divider, um, which is the standard sort of foam piece. And you just tension that into place. There is no tray, there is no key, there are no handles, there are no bells and whistles beyond that. Um, one uh, thing that I think is worth pointing out here is that this humidor, I'm guessing, if I took all seven humidors that are part of this test, put them on a table in front of you and asked you to rank them from the least expensive to the most expensive, I'm guessing you would think that this is the least expensive. Um, and there's a couple of things going on here. The look of it is unique, but it also does kind of make it seem like it's not as luxury as some of the other items that are on here. It also has this weird sort of laminate feel that is cheaper feeling than what the like high gloss lacquer tends to feel like. Um, and it also doesn't weigh very much. It's a little over three pounds, um, which is a lot lighter. In some cases, it's less than half of what some of these other humidors weigh. Now it is on the smaller side, which of course means it's gonna be lighter and likely probably cheaper, but um, it does, you know, 
it does kind of feel like you're getting what you pay for with it. That being said, um, at least from like the very basics, it does check the boxes. These things are aligned here. Um, there's no visible gaps in the seal. Um, and so, uh, well, it doesn't feel like the most expensive product. It also, unlike the last humidor I reviewed, you know, isn't glaringly sort of, at least from the outside, uh, full of a whole bunch of issues. So all of the seven humidors go through the same testing protocol. Uh, the first thing I do is I take a brand new sensor push device, which is what this is. It is a wireless hygrometer, so it can measure relative humidity and temperature, but it's also a data logger. Um, so what that means is that it will store the data and then send it to my smartphone and I can create some charts, which you're about to see in a second. And that means that I can also know what the temperature and relative humidity is without having to open up uh, the humidors, which is important to try to have a sort of unified test. So the first thing I do, um, you know, after I grab the new calibrated sensor push is I take a brand new sponge, I dip this in a glass full of distilled water, I then place it on a small plate inside of the humidor. I leave this here for a week, close the lid, I come back, I open up the humidor, I dip the sponge back in the uh, glass of distilled water, I place it back in the bottom of the humidor, and then I wait another week. And in the case of this humidor, there was nothing spectacular. It did start as the driest humidor, uh, below 50% relative humidity, and it got above 75% relative humidity within about two days, and it peaked at around 78, 79% relative humidity. So after those two weeks were done, I took the sponge out, and then I took the Floris Foam humidifier, and I filled it with a 50-50 mixture of distilled water and propylene glycol. And I will explain why I did that now. So if you ever ask someone how you should store your humidor, you will likely hear 70 and 70. 70% 70 relative humidity and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is because of propylene glycol. And more specifically, propylene glycol's use in products like this. This is a florist foam humidifier. It is the most common type of included humidification option for humidors. Not just at the low end, it comes in high end products. It comes in all different shapes and sizes, things like this. And if you open it up, what you will find is this. This is florist foam. As the name implies, it is foam that is used by florists. What florists do is they soak this in water and then they attach flowers to it and they can use it to make intricate patterns and designs with the flowers while making sure that the flowers stay watered. It's been used in humidors for decades and the way that it works according to the manufacturers, at least most of them, is that you take your product like this and you put a one-to-one, -one, a 50-50 ratio of distilled water and propylene glycol, which is sold in cigar shops as humidor solution and all sorts of other names like that. In short, if you see something, a chemical sold in a cigar shop that's labeled for your humidor, it's probably propylene glycol. And the reason behind this is because if you were to just take this and put it in distilled water like the floors do, it would release uh, the water at a way too high of a rate. There would be nothing really restricting the amount of water that gets released. Propylene glycol has a chemical property that allows for it to restrict it. And depending on the ratio of water to propylene glycol, you can actually try to achieve a specific type of relative humidity. The problem is, is that 50-50, 50% distilled water, 50% propylene glycol, is not going to get anywhere close to 70% relative humidity. There's a third variable, that's the temperature, but the charts that I found from scientists, and this is way above my head, none of them got close to a temperature that made it so that you could have it at 50-50 and get to 70% relative humidity. Even if you got down to 20 degrees, it still wasn't close. And what you actually need is something that's probably closer to two-thirds propylene glycol to one-third distilled water to get to 70% relative humidity. And I might even go beyond that. I might even take it to maybe 80% propylene glycol to 20% distilled water. But I would just use something that wasn't invented in 1954. And the reasons behind that are these products are terribly frustrating. You will oftentimes end up with them putting out way too much moisture because there's just not really a great way to, to unless you're going to you know, weigh out the propylene glycol to distilled water every time uh, to get the two thirds to one third, it's going to be a challenge. Um, and there are problems to that. So if you over humidify your cigars, at the very least, it probably will affect the flavor and maybe it makes them better, but probably not. It likely will cause burn issues. Over humidified cigars tend to not want to stay lit as well. That's why you'll hear people talk about dry boxing cigars if you have burn issues with cigars. And in the worst of instance, you run the risk of mold. So this is a floors foam humidifier that was filled with a 50-50 ratio. And as you can see, there's now mold growing on the outside of the humidifier. And obviously, if there's mold growing there, that means that there's mold floating around your humidor, which will eventually get onto your cigars and cause you all sorts of problems. So the short of this is, don't use something that was invented in 1954 to humidify your cigar. So each humidor spent four weeks with their included humidifier and the Craftsman's Bench Savannah 
did not do particularly well, which isn't terribly surprising given the size of the humidifier. Uh, you can see there it spiked up a little bit at the beginning, but then it just started this gradual decline. Um, it, you know, certainly goes well into the low 50s, um, which is not great. Um, but more importantly, it doesn't really spend very much time in that sort of 65 to 70 range that I would like to see my cigar stored at. And this isn't surprising. I suspect that this humidor probably needed a bit more seasoning. Um, it just seemed like it, it, it needs a lot more moisture inside of it. And the data certainly would suggest that not just this data, but also now that you see this chart. So after that was done, I took three brand new Bovidas, uh, 60 gram packets, and I placed them inside of each humidor and left them there for six weeks uh, with the included humidifier taken out of the humidor. And what you can see there is that for the first sort of third of this test, the Bovidas were not producing the relative humidity. They're set to 69% that they should be producing. And I suspect that's because the humidor needed more moisture. But you can see after the sort of, you know, the, the one third, maybe 40% of the way through the test, um, and remind you, this is a six week test. So we're talking about here, two to three weeks, uh, you know, right around that range. Um, and then the Bovidas started performing well. Now there is that linear line here that takes place in sort of the last quarter. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. The sensor push just stopped recording data for like two weeks. Um, this is the second humidor test in a row. I've had issues with sensor push, which is kind of crazy because prior to that, I'd probably used 30 of them. And out of the 30 humidor or sensor push devices, I'd only had one issue. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, we're now two for two um, with the humidor test. But the Bovis seemingly did their job. It just took them a while. And I'm guessing that was because the humidor needed to get seasoned. Um, and so after that, they then go into this device that you see right here, which is a uh, dry cabin. It's made for electronics, particularly photo equipment, um, if you live in a super humid environment and want to try to protect it. Uh, but the advantage here is that I can set the relative humidity inside this box, and I can use it to try to replicate what would happen if the, all the humidors were left in a dry room, in, in a controlled environment. So it's set to 36% relative humidity. I take the Bovida packets out of the humidor, and then I leave it in here. And all of the humidors so far have basically performed the same, which has been this linear decline. The only question has been sort of how much moisture they lose. Um, this was the, the second most amount of moisture so far that's been lost in this test. Um, I don't really know what to make entirely of this test yet, particularly because all these humidors are basically performing the same. Um, I will point out that the humidor basically ends up at the after this entire testing process is done, basically in the same spot that it started out with in terms of the relative humidity that was inside of the box. I'm guessing that I probably need to reseason this humidor if I plan on using it again. Um, and I probably want to go through the seasoning process for a lot longer, probably over a month compared to what I did the first time around. Around. All right, so that takes us to what is normally the pros and cons section of these reviews. Now, here's the deal. This humidor is not all bad. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, on the exterior side of things, uh, these edges all align, these panels all align. You know, they're, th this isn't a complete disaster, but I normally reserve this section for the sort of like things that I don't expect that are positive or negative. Um, and the fact that this humidor doesn't have like glaring misalignments, unlike the prestige Winchester humidor I just reviewed, uh, isn't really what this category is intended for. And so I don't really have any like standout pros. It's not the cheapest humidor in the world. Um, it doesn't have any cool sort of included accessories. There is this sort of unique texture or printing that's been done on it. But other than that, there's nothing sort of special about it. It's a pretty no frills humidor. Unfortunately, there are some things that stand out as being sort of like uniquely unexpectedly bad problems. So um, I'm gonna focus on three of them for this video. There are a few more mentioned on the text review on halfwheel.com. So the first thing is that uh, this panel right here, so if I was facing the humidor, it would be the left side. I'm guessing that this panel has come dislodged from where it should be. Um, and I can actually move this panel um, and I can also move the front and the back panels. I'll have to get some close-ups of this so you can see it there. But um, what you can see here is that the, the corners on both the, the top and the bottom sides on the left side of the humidor are, uh, they're not aligned and that's probably because this piece isn't where it should be. On the other side of the humidor, there's also a gap right here on the front side and I can wiggle this piece, albeit not as much as the, the other one. Um, the second issue that I have, which I really don't recall ever seeing before, is, is if I take this humidor, uh, yeah, it's, it's this side, uh, I can actually push the, um, the floor of the humidor in, and you can actually hear it. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, not great. 
you can see there's a quality control sticker uh, right there. Um, that's not great. Uh, I will admit that these two issues both could have happened in shipping. So perhaps when it went through quality control or not in shipping, but post leaving the factory. So perhaps when it went through quality control of the factory, everything was fine. And then the, you know, that piece in the inside got dislodged and whatever glue was holding the floor in came undone. Um, but whatever the case is, uh, when the humidor showed up, there were some issues um, there. One thing that, um, and perhaps sort of the, like, the, to be quite honest, the thing that annoys me the most about this humidor is this. So this is the included um, humidifier. I've already mentioned the issues I have with floor foam, but the real like struggle with this is that this is less than a third of the size of this. Um, and this is kind of the sort of the standard size floors foam humidifier. It's in a fancier case, but they're basically all the same thing and they're basically all the same size. This is probably not enough to humidify this humidor. I don't know if it's the downfall for this particular review, but it's less than a third of the size of, of this. And this is going in a humidor that's not even twice the size of this one. Um, and I think that this is just sort of ludicrous, particularly because in order to go from this to something of this size, we're talking about literal cents here, like like maybe five cents um, in terms of extra expense. And this is just gonna set you up for failure. There's no way that this by itself is gonna be able to humidify this in a normal environment. And I, well, I would recommend never using floors foam humidifiers. It annoys me that consumers are sort of being set up to fail with um, humidors. And JC Newman is not the only one in fact, I believe the humidor that this came out of was also another one where I had a complaint that it was underpowered. But this is perhaps the most egregious example so far in this series. And it's something that, you know, it's not a quality control issue. That's a, a sort of a, an engineering or a, you know, manufacturing choice that was made to not put enough, uh, at least in my opinion, humidification power inside of this humidor. And uh, obviously there's an easy remedy to it, unlike say the, the fact that the floor has become undone. But that is sort of the, the egregious, um, you know, con on the pro and cons list for the Craftsman's Bench Havana humidor. So when I was originally planning these tests, I thought that I was gonna do humidor reviews at around $100. And then I went online and I looked and what I realized was that I was probably gonna end up just repeating myself. I was gonna have a whole bunch of humidors that all had the same issues and I didn't really wanna do that. And yet, that's kind of where I'm at today. We're four humidors into the seven humidor test and every single one of them so far has been, well, there are some glaringly problematic things with this humidor that I'm guessing probably don't apply to all of the humidors that are made that are part of, you know, the Craftsman's Bench of Anna humidor. I'm guessing that not all of them have floors that have come undone. It just seems like for whatever reason, the humidors that we bought all have problems to them. And I can't recommend the Craftsman's Bench Havana for the same reason I couldn't recommend any of the other humidors previous to this. I suspect if you throw enough Bovidas or if you buy, you know, two of these style floors from humidifiers, you'll have enough humidity to where it will sort of work. If you put enough Bovidas in, it will probably work or Bovida competitors in. Um, but like you heard the noise, the floor of the humidor shouldn't be coming undone and it's annoying. Um, hopefully then the other three humidors in this series go better. Um, if you are looking for reviews of humidors that I would actually recommend, you can go to halfwheel.com where there are is extensive re reviews of cigar accessories, including humidors. Uh, we also review cigars on a near daily basis and have the most comprehensive coverage of the cigar industry from a news perspective.